Kelly Reardon spent her summers in college working in orphanages in Peru. That's what drew her to become a social worker in the adoption profession, and it opened her heart to want to adopt internationally herself. I wouldn't marry Randall till he agreed that he would adopt with me one day. Early in their marriage, she'd browse the International Waiting Children site online, and when a picture popped up of a little girl in Vietnam, she couldn't get the image out of her mind. I just thought she was adorable, and just I was just drawn to her. Every time you looked at that picture, or we would get new pictures, you would just, you just couldn't put it down. Other adoptive families had already expressed interest in the little girl, but the Reardons kept checking back. I know it sounds crazy, like how can you love a picture when you you don't know this child, but we really did, and I, I just knew. What they didn't know were exactly what challenges they would be taking on. They saw the medical files for the tiny toddler, Vietnamese orphanage nannies called Mai Mai. They knew she was blind in one eye and had a heart murmur that she was premature, born at 26 weeks, and that something wasn't quite right with her brain. It was kind of scary to read that file for the first time because it was a Vietnamese medical report. It was coin flip as to whether these things were actually true or not. They had already committed to adopting this child, but they wanted expert advice on how to care for her once she got home. So they sought out the International Adoption Center at Cincinnati Children's, where they met Dr. Mary Allen Statt, who founded the center and has three internationally adopted children herself. The first thing that she told me was, you know, she's an amazing little girl, and I, I'll never forget that. Are you gonna talk? <laughs> we had had other doctors that just told us basically a doomsday story that, uh, was discouraging and she saw her first and, and she was very realistic and helpful and explained things but she saw her for a person first and so that was very encouraging to us. This is a great job for anyone to have as far as the joy that you get in helping families who are internationally adopting but for me it's it's incredibly personal. I really want to make sure all our families feel very supported from the very beginning until their kids are adults. My kids are now adults and adoption is always going to be a part of their lives and I want to make sure that we have services there for the families throughout their children's lives. As it celebrates its 20th anniversary this year, the International Adoption Center has seen more than 3,000 children over the years and has helped countless more families pre-adoptively. With all we had going on, if we had had to go find specialists on our own and make appointments and figure out all the things like Dr. Stat just referred us and showed us what to do and we made those appointments, like it was kind of a one-stop shop. They treated our daughter, but they helped us so much. It's probably the most fun thing I get to do is to help families through the process of international adoption. We are there to help the family once they've decided to internationally adopt and to help them to feel comfortable with what conditions their child has. Ever since the Reardons came home with the daughter they call Gracie, they've reached milestones they never expected. Gracie is spunky. She loves to play and jump. She can sign a little and is starting to say words. Can you say kitty cat? There you yeah. go. She goes to kindergarten and the family can't wait to see what she does next. When we were praying about her file, I called my mom to talk about it because we're very close and I knew that I would need her support if we adopted a child with special needs. So a few days went by and my mom went to church on Sunday and the pastor was saying, some people can't see that the, the gospel is a masterpiece, just like this Picasso painting, and he put up a Picasso painting of this dark-headed little girl that had her eyes, you know, Picasso paintings are crazy, but her eyes were like all over and her nose were uh, like moved over and you know, it looked a lot like Gracie. The pastor said, she's a masterpiece. And so that's the calling I always go back to, that God, he made her exactly who she's supposed to be. She's perfect the way she is. And I have zero doubt that she's supposed to be in our family.